Hi everyone, this is Paul Davis with Green Ridge Baptist Church. I wanted to give you uh, an overview of how we use our soundboard. What you're seeing there is the Behringer X32. It's a very powerful soundboard, but it's also a little complex, uh, complicated, it's kind of complex. So I wanted to go through uh, some of the functions that we use, and hopefully this video will be helpful for when you need to do some training, um, brush up on something, or you need to troubleshoot something. So we're just going to walk through some things. Some of these things, some of you already know, but it's helpful anyway. The first thing that I want you to be aware of is that these right here, there are 16 channels visible right here. And everything from here all the way down to here has to do with just this one channel. So each of these channels has a select button. It has a solo button, a mute button, and this is called the fader. There are 16 channels here, but this is the X32. See right here, X32. So there are actually 32 inputs that you have access to. The way that uh, this board is set up is that you have one through 16 right here, but these little buttons down here will change the page that you're on. So if you select this button, it'll now show you channels 17 through 32. These are blacked out and I'll show you how to do that later. But this one is channel one through 16, one, through 16. This one is channels 17 through 32. Once you hit these page buttons, this is channel one, and all of this row is channel one. All of this row is channel two. But when you hit this page button, all of this row is now channel 17. All of this row is now channel 18. So it's important that when you are um, messing with stuff on the soundboard that you're on the right channel and that you're on the right page. Next thing that I want you to see is that these are faders. These control the level that you want your sound to be at. The default position of the soundboard is that the mains, the, the main speakers that are facing the congregation, are controlled by these sliders. So this slider is for channel 4. If you want channel 4 to get louder, you push it up. If you want channel 4 to get softer, you pull it down. The other thing to keep in mind is the main slider, which is this one all the way on the far right. It's the slider that's all the way over here. So this will control um, all of your mains. So if what you're looking at over here, uh, this is your mix. You know, if you've got a couple microphones and um, a guitar and another guitar, this is the mix that you want it at. These are the levels that you want these in relation to each other. Then you can control this whole mix through this mains slider. It's really important, if this main slider is all the way down, there's no sound that's gonna come out of the speakers. So you wanna make sure that this is up. The next thing that you need to see is this select, solo, and mute button. The mute button does exactly what a mute button does on everything else. You push it and it's red, that means channel one is now muted. Channel 10 is muted. Channel 12 is muted. If it's not red, it's not muted. So uh, again, this mute button, you can push it however many times you want on these guys. The way that this board is set up is that each channel has its own mute button. You can do mute groups, but I'm not gonna show you that right now. Uh, I just want you to see the mute button. When it's red, the mute is on. That means it is muted. When it's off, that means the channel uh, is loud. You can hear it when, it when it's set correctly. The other thing is solo. The solo button, which is right above the icon, is for use with headphones. You plug your headphones in on that side of the, key, uh, of the soundboard. What you can do with this is if you solo channel one and you have your headphones on, you can see that it, the clear solo button starts blinking. We'll talk about that in a second. But when you solo something, that means that in your headphones, you'll be able to hear this particular channel. You can click off of this and the solo is done, or you can solo several things together. And if you want to take all of those off at the same time, you do clear solo. And now these are no longer solo. Let me come over here so you can see that when you clear solo right there. 
The next thing I want you to see is gain. The gain knob is right up here in the far left corner. The way that I want you to think about gain, uh, there's two ways I want you to think about gain. The first way is with any instrument that you have, whether it's a, a vocal mic or an instrument. One way to think about gain from the stage is gain is the sensitivity of the microphone. You can think about it as a microphone has this bubble of sensitivity around it. As the gain increases, the bubble gets bigger. That means the microphone becomes more sensitive. As the gain decreases, the microphone becomes less sensitive. So the bubble of sensitivity decreases. That's one way to think about gain. So if somebody is, if their face is really close to the microphone, they don't need as much gain. If their face is really far away from the microphone, they're gonna need more gain because the sensitivity of the microphone needs to grow. Another way to think about gain is from the perspective of the soundboard. You can think about gain as a gate. The higher the gain, the wider the gate, the lower the gain, the, the narrower the gate. And you can think about this in terms of a flood. If your gate is, if your gain is really high, that means your gate is wide open and a lot of signal can come into your soundboard. If your gate is uh, closed, meaning your gain is low, that means there's not a lot of signal. There's not a lot of flow getting into your soundboard. That's another way to think about it. So the very first thing that you want to do anytime that you begin to mix your soundboard or address your sound is to adjust your gain. And the way that you do that is you adjust gain for each channel. So when I select this channel, now all of a sudden my gain is only reflecting this channel. It has nothing to do with any of the other channels that are unselected. And you can see, I think maybe, you can see that the gain here, I can turn it up so that it's really high. And then if I switch channels, the gain for this one is now different, okay? So this gain corresponds to whichever channel you've selected. So for our purposes, I'm going to, this is the microphone that I'm currently using and you can see that I'm talking at normal volume and I'm only getting up to about negative 16 uh, uh, dBs here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select it and now you can see that uh, the meter next to the gain knob is lighting up. So I want to go ahead and get up to about negative 12 instead of negative 16. So I'm going to raise my gain until I'm about, until I'm consistently hitting negative 12. And you can see that now that the gain is higher, I'm starting to get in some yellow here. And that's okay. The thing with gain is that you want it to be high enough to where you have room to work with your signal. If your signal's too low, if your signal's too low, your, um, your slider is gonna have to be super high in order to get anything out. If your gain is too high, you get what we call feedback. That means that the speakers are picking, or the microphone is picking itself up in the speaker and there's this feedback loop and it ends up sounding something like wah or something like that, really loud. That's a gain issue. So you want, you want your gain to be high enough that you've got room to work with, but you want it to be low enough to where it doesn't feedback. So I'm getting two yellows consistently. So I'm gonna come back down to where I've only got about one yellow consistently. I'm going to go about right there. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good spot. The next thing I want you to see is DCAs. So remember, we've got our pages over here with channels 1 through 16. You have something similar with this set of sliders. This set of sliders is going to show you the DCAs. And I'm not, I don't remember what DCA stands for, but we have eight DCA groups, 1 through 8. What this, uh, section of the soundboard also will show you is bus 1 through 8 and bus 9 through 16. Bus is another word for send. Send is another word for, you can think of it as monitor. So there's a, there's a few different words in there that are used for the same thing. Bus is a monitor or some kind of send. So this page shows, or this section of the soundboard is working with three, um, three different pages. The first page is your DCAs. Your second page is bus 1 through 8. Your third page is bus 9 through 16. What we're going to work with right now is, is our DCAs. A DCA is, you can think of a DCA as a group 
of channels. So these channels don't just pour into the main speakers. They are first poured into uh, these DCAs, and then these DCAs come into the mains. You can think about these as, um, if these are like pieces of fruit, and this is the delivery truck, first you put the pieces of fruit in a box, and then you put the box in the delivery truck. You can think about it like that. So these channels first go into the DCAs, the DCAs then feed into the mains. So another thing to think about is you may have these mixed however you want them, but if your DCAs are not up, nothing is gonna be getting into the mains anyway. So you gotta make sure that your DCAs are up. So I'm gonna show you how to put stuff into the DCAs. You can see there that when I push and hold on DCA one, I'm getting some stuff that lights up here. That means that those channels are pouring into that DCA. The way that this used to be set up is all vocals were on this DCA, and let's go ahead and do that. So these are two microphones that are not in this DCA, so we're gonna go ahead and put them in there. So now I can undo that, and this DCA, you can see, has all of those channels in it. If we go down to, to page, the second page of this section of the soundboard, go to channel 17 to 32, you can see that these are here, but these aren't vocal mics. So I'm going to go ahead and take the, those out of this DCA. All right. So now if I go back up to page one, where it's channel one through 16, these DCA or these channels are in this DCA. Now, this DCA and this, this DCA, DCA1 and DCA2, are actually sharing the same channel. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing and take those out, put those other ones in, and there we go. DCA3 and 4 are going to be our instrument channel. So I'm going to push and hold select above that DCA, and I want all of my instruments in that DCA, which means I'm going to do this and this. So this was a microphone that I don't want in there. This was the acoustic guitar that I do want in there. And let's go to the second page and see what we have. These are all drum mics. This was the click track. That doesn't need to be anywhere in there. So these are all drum mics. These are the rest of my instrument channels, and now they are all in the DCA. We're going to do the same thing for this DCA number four, because we want it to be the same as the other DCA and now they are the same. So again, a DCA, the, you can think of your, um, your individual channels like pieces of fruit. You can think of the DCAs as a basket or a box. You can think of your main slider as a truck. The fruit goes in the, bo the box, the box goes in the truck. Now I wanna show you how to adjust monitors. When I'm leading worship, I will usually have the iPad down on the um, stage and I will adjust the monitors myself but there may come a time when you need to adjust monitors so the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to go to this section of the soundboard and I want you to go to the page that says bus 1 through 8 now remember your bus is the same thing as a send or the same thing as a monitor so we have bus 1 and bus 2 this actually says right stage right here this says left stage, and that's meant to help you. Um, bus one is on this side of the stage from your perspective. Bus two is on that side of the stage from your perspective. And so what this does is, again, you can think about fruit and boxes. These are the boxes. So whatever, all of these channels are either feeding into one of these two guys, and then these are the main control. So you mix the... Um, you mix the channel, and then this is kind of your main control for uh, the monitor. What that means is that you can have a whole mix, and if someone from the stage says, you know, it's mixed pretty well, but can you just bring the whole thing down in, in the right side of the stage? You can say, sure, and you can bring all of it down instead of just one or two channels. So the way that you put channels into the monitor mix, you, there's two ways to do it. One way is from the channel itself. Let's say that somebody up there says that they need more acoustic guitar on the right side of the stage. The right side of the stage is bus one. 
So that means that you're going to select the acoustic and you can see up here it says right and left. Again, that's from your perspective, right, left, and you can see up here it says monitors. So that means you've selected channel one. So now everything up here corresponds only, uh, you've selected the acoustic. So that means everything up here now corresponds to the acoustic channel, which is channel 14. So they said they wanted more acoustic in the monitor on the right, into monitor one, and so you're going to increase that. If they said they also wanted it on the monitor two, which is the left side of the stage from your perspective, you're going to increase it there. Same with decreasing, decreasing. That's one way to do it. If you do it that way, you have to do it with each individual channel like that. So let's say they said they wanted more acoustic guitar and more of my vocals. My vocals are pretty much always on channel eight. And so you're gonna select channel eight and increase that channel in monitor on the right side and increase that on monitor on the left side. The other way to do this is to click this little button. It says sends on faders. Now remember, a send is the same as a bus. It's the same as a monitor. Send, monitor, bus are all the same, talking about the same thing. So what, what this button is saying is you want to put the send on the faders. Okay, you want to put the send on the faders. So what that means is that you're going to select bus one. You're going to select it, and then you're going to do sends on faders, boom. And what that means is that now bus one is what these faders are talking about. So now this is where the acoustic is on bus one or on this monitor channel. This fader is where this keyboard is on this monitor channel. This fader is where this channel is on this monitor channel. So sends on faders is going to put this bus on the faders. Watch what happens when I do sends on faders, but I select this one. It changes just the tiniest bit. But if I select number five, it's very different because there's nothing really on, there's nothing really that we use bus five for. And so um, you do this. All right. So you see on channel 15, it says channel 15, and then it has a little arrow, and then it says bus one. That's what that means. It's channel 15 as it's going into bus one. If I take sins on faders off, and now it's just channel 15, period, and that means that it's going into the mains. The important thing at this point is that you unclick sends on faders because you could be here and you need to adjust something in the main speakers, but you're here and you'll be trying to do something and nothing will be happening, but you're just wrecking your monitor mix right here. So you need to make sure to click that off before you do anything else. The last three, three things that I want to talk about are um, icing on the cake. These are things that are good that we need to work on, but they're not uh, vital for how things are going to run on a Sunday morning, at least not right now. The very first thing that I want to show you uh, is, are EQs. EQs is the equalizer. That's, uh, do we need more highs in this channel? Do we need more lows in this channel? Do we need more mids in this channel? And this is really addressing the uh, the different sound qualities that we have. Sometimes people sound like they're in a barrel. Sometimes people sound like they're too echoey. Sometimes the, the, the really high piercing frequencies of a channel are just really out there and we need to mellow that out a bit. So that's what EQs are for. They're to help normalize the sound quality because the sound waves are turning into electrical signals and then turning back into sound waves and you get some weird distortions that come with that. So there are two ways to uh, adjust EQs, the equalizer. One of them is up here. You can't really see it very well, but this says equalizer. And that's uh, what this is going to do is you're going to select a channel. Remember, anytime I select a channel, this stuff up here reflects what's going on in this particular channel. So when you click this, all of that changes to reflect what's going on on this channel. When you do this, all of this changes to reflect what's going on on this channel. So the EQs for a particular channel are going to show up here. The best way to see this is you can click view 
there and it'll take you right to it on this screen. What you have here are four um, points at which you can adjust the equalizer. You have the highs, the mid high, the mid low, uh, or the low mid, and then the low. And you can click in between these. And this is the same thing that's going on over here. So if you click high, that's going to be the frequencies that are on the high range of the spectrum. And you've got three ways that you can adjust that. The gain is going to be how much you want to boost that signal or how much you want to dampen that signal. The Q, I don't know what that stands for, but that's kind of like the, the range that you want your effect to have. So if you have a, a wide range, it's going to hit a whole bunch of frequencies leading up to that frequency. If it's very narrow, it's really just going to pinpoint that one particular frequency. And then this is the frequency knob, and that allows you to address a particular frequency if it's, if it's really getting to you. So you can adjust that here. You can also adjust it here. For right now, stick with here, this one. So you've done highs. Let's do the high mids. Same thing, I can increase or decrease. I can broaden or thin out where I want that, or I can pinpoint a particular, a particular one. So you can do low mids and then lows. What this one has here is called a, uh, one thing you can do is a low cut. Uh, a low cut will, will cut off a whole bunch of low frequencies and you can move that as far over as you want. Sometimes it's very helpful, sometimes it's not so helpful, it doesn't really matter. The next thing I want to show you is routing. Now, routing on this board is really complicated. It's really complex, but it's really necessary to really try and figure out what's going on. The way you get to routing is you go to routing. So this is what the routing menu looks like when you first bring it up. And you can see that there are several different things here. You have home. If you go over, you have out um, 1 through 16, you have aux out, you have P16 out, you have card out, you have AES 50A, AES 50B, you have XLR out. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here. The biggest thing that I want to show you is if in case something is weird and you can't get a block of channels to come through, one of the things that you need to look at is what's going on with the routing. So the way that our board is set up right now is that this AES 50A 1 through 8, AES 50A, 9 through 16, AES, uh, AES 50A, 17 through 20, and then 25 through 32. The numbers there correspond to the board channels. Okay, um, What's happening with these is that they are corresponding to how the board is interacting with the signals that are coming in. One of the ways that the uh, board can interact with signals is through local, which is what that says up there. Local 1 through 8, local 9 through 16, local 17 through 24, local 25 through 32. What that means is that your, your microphones and your instruments are plugged directly into the back of the soundboard. That's what local means. It's the local inputs on the soundboard. Another way that this can happen is through the AES-50. What that means is that there is an Ethernet cable plugged into the back of the soundboard that runs all the way to the stage to another box out there. That's what we currently have. And that one Ethernet cable is running all 32 channels and running all 16 outputs back to that box on the stage. This is super convenient, super helpful, super nice. And right now, that's how our channels are running. So you can see it says inputs 1 through 8, inputs 9 through 16. All of our inputs are for 1 through 8 are running to the AES 50A 1 through 8. All of our inputs for 9 through 16 are running on the AES 50 9 through 16. You can see here the only difference is that all of our 25 through 32, those channels are running on local. That means that we're not running those from the stage, from the sound, uh, from the box that's on stage through the ethernet cable. We're actually using channels 25 through 32 in the back of the soundboard to plug stuff in like the computer audio or uh, whatever else we want to use. The other thing that I want to show you is the P16. The P16 is the box that the um, instruments use uh, for their in-ear monitors. And the over here, what you see is this is P16 out number one. 
these are the channels that correspond to the 16 channels on the P16. And so there are 16 buttons on the little boxes down there that the instrumentalists see. And um, when they click number one, it, this page on the soundboard is going to tell them, uh, is going to communicate what number one is. So you can see here that for them, P16 out number one is going to be fader number one. That's channel number one on the soundboard. To change this, you're going to do output signal and you're going to go down to direct out. Direct out means that's the, you're taking the slider on number one, you're taking channel number one, and that corresponds to uh, direct out. So your P16 out 01 corresponds to direct channel out 01. You can see how this changes down here. If you go to number two, that's the PC. You can see that down here. That's channel 27. The last thing I want to show you is the scribble strip. That's the, uh, that's the thing that shows you on the soundboard what is, uh, what's there. It's just to help you know what's going on. The way that you do that is you click setup and then you go over to scribble strip. From here, you can do a lot of really interesting things. First, you have to select your channel that you want. So. Um, channel 15 right now is set as a belt pack. That's actually the, the microphone that I'm currently using. You get to set the color you want. Black, red, green, yellow, blue, purple, teal, white. Set the color you want. You can set the little picture that you want. There's a whole bunch of pictures in here uh, to choose from. Because this is the belt pack, we're going to go with this little guy. And you can name it whatever you want. Because it's a belt pack, I name it belt pack. Or you can edit the name and call it whatever you want to. If it's like Pastor Tim or whoever. And you can do this with each channel. So if I change the channel. Uh, oops, I made it black. I think I want to make it red. Um, if I go to channel 9. Uh, no, how about channel 14? Channel 14 is my acoustic. It's currently white. It has an acoustic guitar and it's AC. Well, let's change it to acoustic guitar instead of AC. So if I um, slide down there, I click it, and now the name of it is acoustic guitar. That's just a, the scribble strip is to help you as the sound person know what's going on in the soundboard when you first look at it. Friends, I hope this has been helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what I need to change. Let me know if there's anything else that you want to see. Thank you so much. Goodbye.